We're all very familiar with the home COVID test. You get a yes, no answer out of it. And for some applications, that's sufficient. But for a lot of applications, we really need a, a quantitative answer, not just a yes, no answer. Uh, an example of that is for epilepsy patients. There are over 30 drugs, and finding the right dosage can be a challenge, especially because a lot of these drugs have adverse side effects. If a physician wants to get a drug level, what they will do is they'll send them to a clinic to give a blood sample, and then the clinician will circle back with the patient. So this is a multi-day process, and so what we'd like to do is use these devices to take real-time measurements and then use this data to really come up with a drug dosing plan that's going to be optimal for them. So a lot of our focus is on taking big instruments that would sit in a biology lab or in a chemistry lab uh, and trying to shrink those down so they can fit in the palm of your hand or even on your fingertip. So using semiconductor manufacturing tools that typically you use for making microprocessors or GPUs, but instead using those same tools to make new biosensors and new diagnostic platforms. So in this lab, we do primarily electrical testing. So this is what we would call a dry laboratory. But when we move into some of the more active uh, biosensing and working with fluidics, uh, then we move into another laboratory that we call a wet lab. And in that space, we can have um, larger setups where we have uh, fluids going through these, these sensor systems and can do a lot of that hands-on measurement. What we really want is something that a patient can use that's as simple as a glucose meter. So when a person with epilepsy is going to make a, a drug level measurement, they would donate a small volume of saliva into a disposable card and then insert this card into that non-disposable portable instrument and then pair that with a smartphone and use that to read out their drug levels. OSU is a really collaborative place. The shared space is really good for cross-pollination, especially among the graduate students who primarily do the work in here. They are working on their project and their set of applications, but they're also learning about all the work going on around them. One of the things I really enjoy about my job is being able to do these interdisciplinary projects where I get to work with other faculty who can bring their expertise and combine it with mine so that we can really make a bigger impact. I can email anybody on campus about their research and set up a meeting and they're happy to meet and talk about what they're working on and explore possible collaborations. We hope that what we build could be a model for precision health in terms of bringing technology to patients, empowering them to be part of their own health care, and will translate to other chronic conditions.